Bedrock cores have undergone a complete rework in nuclear tech mod and in this video I want to focus on how to find them and the basics of processing them using the new machines that have been added. Now of course you will need not enough items for the complete processing chain but I want to cover the basics in this video. Also if my voice seems a little bit down then it's cause I am still a bit sick and weak in the body. So yeah please bear with me. So without any further ado let's get straight into this video. So let's start by finding these bedrock ores first. So the survey scanner will work in the very early game if you are in a chunk which has bedrock ores in it and right clicking with the survey scanner will show a message in the bottom of the screen like this. Now if you are a little bit into the mid to late game then you can use neutrino lens along with the depth resource scanning satellite. So these both need to be linked using the satellite linking device. You can assign a frequency to them and the satellite will be sent into orbit using the Soyuz rocket or in my case here using commands and once the satellite is in orbit then you can assign a helmet to the neutrino lens and wearing this helmet will showcase all of the rare items along with bedrock ores through the ground like this. And finally we have the bedrock ore density scanner. Now having this in your inventory will show the amount of bedrock ores present in a chunk excellent high very high is good very poor and poor is bad and it is important because you need the maximum amount of ores that you can get so for example once you find a bedrock ore this is how it's going to look like i have dug out the area here and to extract it we once again need the large mining drill now placing the output crate here and starting the drill as we have speed level 3 upgrade it will mine ore every 9.6 seconds so once the ore actually comes out, this time it is no longer linked to any specific type of ore. It is raw bedrock ore with different values of materials. So here I have two examples. One is excellent, moderate, low, high, high and moderate. And this other bedrock ore is very poor and poor in all of its properties. So in order to process these two different values, we are going to use the bedrock ore processor. And the bedrock ore processor is crafted using the following items here. It's not a very expensive crafting recipe. And in order to work, it needs or it can take the speed and effectiveness, but not the power saving and the overdrive upgrade. It needs power and also water. So once you have all of these items in here, first I'm going to process one stack of bedrock ore, which was pretty good in its value. And also it is going to produce slop as a byproduct so make sure you have an exit for that so i'm going to place down one stack of bedrock ore which we mined out from this chunk it has decent values and as a result it will mine out or basically it will separate out different amounts of light metal heavy metal actinite series etc etc so here we have all of the different metals that we are getting from the good quality of bedrock ore and also the shredders do shred so be careful not to fall in them and uh, yeah so this was the bedrock ore that we are getting from the chunk that i have mined out here now i am going to set this crate aside and now we are going to process the second bedrock ore which was very poor and poor in all of its properties now once the entire processing is done we can compare the amount of materials that we get so also we are going to get slop as i told you before each operation will give 1000 millibuckets of slop so make sure to have a tank for that and once both of these processes are done now we can compare so first is a bedrock ore with good properties and from that we get nearly two and a half stack of light metals two stacks of actinite two stacks of non-metal uh, nearly one and a half stack of heavy metal the crystalline and finally rare metal and from the very poor and the poor property of bedrock ore we don't even get a single complete stack of any of these items so that is why it's important to find a good sample of bedrock ore in your world now let's talk about processing slop so each operation will produce 1000 millibuckets of slop as i told you it doesn't matter what quality of bedrock ore it is. Now you can use this slop to produce tar sand, which can be used to produce bitumen. So in the solidifier or slop, 250 millibuckets of it will give tar sand. Another thing you can do is process it in a coker unit or you can coke the it. So basically you get limestone 
and along with limestone you also get colloid now this is not the best use of ore slop that you can use the best use or the best case scenario here will be to use the electrolysis machine so in an electrolysis machine ore slop will be processed to give you mercury along with mercury you will get nitre limestone and the best part is sulfur so sulfur can be a renewable resource in this form as well so this is how you can produce or process or slop now let's talk about processing the bedrock ores but different bedrock ores are obtained from different so for example light bedrock ore will give iron and copper primarily heavy will give tungsten and lead and rare earth will give cobalt and rare earth junk now aside from this you will also obtain secondary items depending on how you are processing this so actinite series will give uranium and thorium non-metal will give coal and sulfur and crystalline ore will give redstone and cinnabar now for the example here i'm going to take the actinite series as uranium and thorium are very important renewable resources for your nuclear reactors so basic processing you will require a centrifuge so in a centrifuge if i process the actinite bedrock ore then you will get the primary fraction of that ore along with gravel and this primary fraction can then be processed again and it will give us one piece of uranium powder and one piece of thorium powder that's it now if we want to double this ore then we need to use an ore acidizer and wash this washing can be done using water so here we get the washed actinite bedrock ore and this can then be once again processed in a centrifuge and this time instead of one primary fraction we are going to get two along with one piece of gravel so gravel is kind of the waste here and these two can then be processed again so this time we get two pieces of uranium powder and two pieces of thorium powder so this is how we double our ore now here's how you can separate out the heavy part which is basically get out more uranium than before so i'm going to showcase a simple automation process we get actinite series separated out then that goes in an acidizer it get washed the washed ore then goes in a centrifuge where our primary fraction then ends up in another ore acidizer with liquid hydrogen which will prioritize the heavy element which is uranium and this time it goes in another centrifuge and we are going to get uh, thorium and uranium in 1 is to 2 ratio so we get 2 uranium powder for every 1 thorium powder along with the bedrock ore crumbs now these ore crumbs can be processed in an acidizer to obtain the bedrock ore again but you need one stack of them it can be processed in an electrolysis machine to obtain two pieces of uranium two pieces of thorium or you can use the arc furnace here directly which will give one ingot of uranium one ingot of thorium so this is the example that i'm going with here in an arc furnace with dash electrodes set it to liquid mode and these crumbs can then go inside and the arc furnace will just do its thing and give us eight ingots of uranium eight ingots of thorium that's the process complete and this is one of the ways that you can process the ore crumbs now in the manner that we processed our ore here which is using liquid hydrogen to separate out the heavy element so higher weight or the primary fraction with higher weight for the light metal will give more iron powder less copper powder with chlorine you can prioritize lower weight so this will give more copper powder but less iron powder with sulfuric acid the byproducts will be obtained so the separated it can be processed again but the byproduct can then be further processed and the byproduct in this case of light metals it will give us in an acidizer when washed uh, titanium and aluminum so titanium and aluminum can be obtained as byproduct along with crumbs now with solvent you can dissolve the metals you will get three outputs in a centrifuge once again it will give you byproduct and this time the byproduct will be chlorocalcite it will also be sodium i think and uh, yeah so chlorocalcite the lithium sodium and once again crops or it can be directly processed in an arc furnace so basically depending on how you are going to process it you will get a lot of different things and it's very important to use nei in this case because the amount of recipes are a lot but with nei you can simplify it but just if you want to prioritize the heavy material you can use liquid hydrogen or if you want to prioritize light material you can use chlorine so i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did do like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my guys stay safe